those of you that do anything worth doing, you may ask yourself why it is you do what you do. For me, I ask myself why it is that I serve. And more recently, I've asked myself why it is I continue to serve, despite missed birthdays, missed holidays, missed fill in the blanks. I had an experience last year that answered all those questions for me. And the reason that I serve is because so many others serve. And my sacrifices, although important to me and my family, they don't compare to the sacrifices of so many others, especially those that sacrificed their lives. As one of many mobility pilots that flies a C-17 combat airlift aircraft, we have a unique opportunity to be involved with operations that span the entire world. Whether it's responding to a natural disaster like Haiti, or airlifting critical patients out of Afghanistan, or transporting men, women, and equipment in and out of an era of responsibility, the mission that we do is global. Every now and then, one of those missions sticks with you. And that's why I'm here today. And when I'm done, you won't remember my name, and you won't remember my face. And that's OK. On August 6, 2011, a Chinook helicopter carrying American soldiers and Afghan soldiers was shot down over Afghanistan. I was one of a few C-17 pilots that brought them home. When I was originally alerted for the mission, I was told that it had changed. And when I asked where we'd be going, they told me back to the States. Later, I would find out that our destination was Dover Air Force Base. After my normal sequence of events that morning, I found myself standing at the bottom of the aircraft steps. I had never done a mission like this before, so I told myself, focus on making it to the cockpit. Just focus on making it to the cockpit. So I took my first step up the ladder, and I took my second step, and that's when I noticed a transfer case by the door. I had never seen one before, only in movies and only in pictures. The American flag was laid out on top and tucked smartly into the sides. I took a deep breath, and I continued up the ladder. As I made my way into the cargo compartment, what became visible to me was the 19 other transfer cases, all identical, all with American flags laid out on top. I continued into the next, up to the next ladder, and into the cockpit where I met the aircraft commander who had brought the fallen soldiers from Afghanistan to Germany. And Germany is where me and my crew would pick up the mission. We discussed the mission, we shook hands, and he was on his way. Because of the magnitude of the event, I felt a need to ensure that my crew members focused on their normal duties. So I instructed the other two pilots and the loadmaster to, be to begin the pre-flight. I also knew that I there had to be some paperwork that I needed to sign. So I went back down into the cargo compartment. And as I did, I watched as the mortuary affairs folks readied and situated the transfer cases for their return home. I found a staff sergeant who had the paperwork. And he said he needed a few more minutes. So I instructed him to come find me in the cockpit when he was ready. A little bit later, he came up into the cockpit. And he said, sir, the paperwork's ready for you to sign. There are moments in my life that I will never forget. The birth of my son and the birth of my daughter. And one occurred very close in time to what I'm describing today. And that's when I had to deliver the unthinkable news to a mother that her son, Major Phil Ambard, was killed in Afghanistan. And while I I didn't think that I would encounter another moment like that so close in my life. Signing that piece of paper was yet another. Because the minute that I signed that piece of paper is the moment that I became completely responsible for those fallen soldiers. It was now my duty, my responsibility, to ensure that they made it back with dignity and respect and safely, an honorable return. I signed the piece of paper. I ensured the jet was fueled and the pre-flight was complete. And then I went downstairs to do the last thing that I do, which is the walk around. As I exited the C-17, a bus had pulled up to the front of the jet. 
The bus was carrying fellow Navy SEAL members that were there to accompany their fallen friends back to the States. This stopped me in my tracks because I didn't know what to do and I didn't know what to expect. But let me tell you what I saw. Every single one of them came off of that bus with their heads held high, a determination in their look and a quickness to their step, and I have to believe that's exactly what they look like when they go out on a mission. I made eye contact with the first seal, I nodded in respect, and he nodded back. I stood there and watched while every single one of them boarded the C-17. And then I completed my walk around, and I again found myself standing at the bottom of the aircraft steps. I looked up into the cargo compartment and I saw two American flags and one Navy SEAL flag hung from the ceiling. Three of the 20 transfer cases were visible. And I looked up on the side of my aircraft and I saw United States Air Force painted on the side. And I stood there trying to take it all in. Because I don't want to forget the sights, the sounds, the smells, or the faces of the seals that day. Because we should never, ever forget the fawn. I know that my role, my crew's role, in getting these fallen soldiers back home is insignificant compared to the lives they lived and the things that they did for our country. Most of it we'll never know. But what I do know is every American should see what I've seen. Every American should witness the amount of time, energy, effort, and attention to detail that goes into ensuring that a fallen soldier has an honorable return. Every American should witness the busloads of families that are driven into Dover Air Force Base to be reunited with their fallen loved one. Now the very next day, we took that same aircraft back overseas. And as we left over and we leveled at our cruise altitude, I got out of the seat. And I went back down in the cargo compartment. No more American flags hung from the ceiling. All 20 transfer cases were gone. Instead, I watched a father lay with his son, cradled on his chest, and I watched a little girl clutching a teddy bear lay in the same spot that only yesterday held a fallen soldier. And it dawned on me that so many Americans have no idea where the fallen lie, and I'm proud to be one that does. And when I began this, I told you that you won't remember my name and you won't remember my face. But here's the thing, you cannot forget theirs. Jonas Kelsall, Louis Langley, Thomas Ratzlaff, Craig Vickers, Brian Bill, John Foss, Kevin Houston, Matthew Mason, Stephen Mills, Nicholas Knoll, Robert Reeves, Heath Robinson, Derek Benson, Christopher Campbell, Jared Day, John Duangdara, Michael Strange, John Tummelson, Adam Vaughn, Jason Workman, Jesse Pittman, Nicholas Spehar, David Carter, Brian Nichols, Patrick Hamburger, Alexander Bennett, 
Spencer Duncan, John Brown, Andrew Harville, Daniel Zerb. Thank you.